Disorders of the auditory nerve produce sensory neural hearing loss, so the neural part of the hearing loss. Common symptoms include tinnitus, ringing of the ear, high frequency hearing loss, unilateral or bilateral sensory neural hearing losses with different degrees, so differences between the ears, and a discrepancy between the amount of hearing loss and scores on the speech recognition test, so the speech recognition test being worse than on the audiogram, pure tones. Lesions of the eighth auditory nerve could recur as a result of disease, irritation, or pressure on the nerve trunk, and etiologies include tumors, meningitis, a hemorrhage, and trauma. Most tumors on the auditory nerve are benign. They can vary in size. They usually arise from sheaths that cover the vestibular branch of the eighth auditory nerve or peripheral cells of the auditory nerve, and they're called acoustic neuromas. The larger the acoustic neuroma, the greater the probability the pressure will cause a change in the function of the cochlear, vestibular, or facial nerves, as well as the internal auditory artery. They occur in about 1 out of 100,000 people. They're more common in adults over the age of 30. 95% of them are unilateral. So remember, one of the symptoms is a unilateral hearing loss, so they're one-sided. And most are caused by the absence of a tumor suppressor gene. The earlier they're discovered, the more successful the chance of removal. As the tumor size increases, symptoms become more obvious, including tinnitus, which is ringing of the ears, dizziness, hearing loss, and speech recognition difficulties. Symptoms are progressive unilateral hearing loss, facial weakness or numbness, alterations in senses of taste and vision because the seventh facial nerve is often affected by the growing tumor. Like I said, these are usually benign, but damage due to pressing on the brain or cranial nerves may occur. The decision to operate on these acoustic neuromas depends on a number of factors, including the age of the individual, the age of onset of the tumor, the size and the precise location, the patient's preference, and whether or not the patient has any symptoms. So they're benign. They can just be left, but if they grow and they become a problem, they can be removed by a gamma knife. So a gamma knife is the application of focused beams of gamma radiation that stop the tumor's growth. There's no surgical incision necessary. This eliminates the risk of an infection. It is an outpatient procedure and allows for the treatment of otherwise inaccessible lesions, minimizes the damage to the surrounding tissues, and it is painless. Acoustic neuromas are, can be associated with gradual, progressive, that means it gets worse, the hearing loss, but pressure on the internal auditory artery may result in an interference with the blood supply to the cochlea and create a sudden hearing loss progressive loss as a result of anoxia or blocking oxygen to the cochlea. So that's something that needs to be considered with acoustic neuromas. Other nerves may also be affected by the tumor, including nerve 5, you could have pain and numbness to the face, nerve 6, which create double vision, nerve 7, alterations in taste, facial weakness, or a loss of both ipsilateral and contralateral acoustic reflexes. The acoustic neuroma cannot be diagnosed solely on the basis of an audiogram. A battery of tests are necessary, including acoustic reflexes, ABR latencies where one wave is delayed compared to the other waves. You'd see an abnormality in the ABR on one side but not on the other. Remember this is a unilateral hearing loss. OAEs, the person could have normal OAEs, normal, normal cochlear function, and abnormal ABRs. There's also vestibular testing. Abnormal signs include spontaneous nystagmus with the eyes closed. That's when the eyes go back and forth, dizziness. A decrease in vestibular function on one side. An increase in the amount of protein in the fluid of the spine, and, which is a result of the tumors. 
ABRs are less expensive to do than MRIs, so an ABR can be used as a screening procedure, but you need an MRI to confirm diagnosis.